From Los Angeles, I'm Brad Lamack. Welcome back to segment three with Los Angeles-based casting director and a, a nice guy, Michael Donovan, who will, people say, oh, he's, he'll spoil us because yeah. they're going to think that every casting director is like this man. They're not? Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll after, <laughs> after uh, when the cameras aren't running, we'll <laughs> talk about that. I'm Brad Lamack. I wrote a book called The Business of Acting to help empower actors on their career journey uh, with a discussion and some lessons about that uh, well, you need to take care of business, not just know how to memorize lines and that sort of thing. And so that's what the business of acting is all about. This series, Inside the Business of Acting, is here to let you sit in on conversations with working actors and people who are pros in the industry, who have a, a perspective and a career journey on their own and their own lessons learned along the way that uh, we are sharing with you to make you jump and skip a little quicker to get where it is that you, that you want. The audition process is a, it can be very daunting, and I, and I want to give these folks mm -hmm. some nuts and bolts kind of advice. So we talked about in, in segment one, I think that we've got two kinds of actors who are listening in. I also think, by the way, you know, if you're not an actor and you're just a person who's interested in what happens behind the scenes, we love that mm -hmm. and that we're on the worldwide, whatever you call it, <laughs> you can be anywhere and be <laughs> watching this. And so that I think is just enormously exciting. Uh, but for actors who are, who are just beginning, they're making the transition uh -huh. from student to professional mm -hmm. or for actors who have been working actors or in the business for a long time and find that their careers are kind of Stuck. Stalled. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, those actors rarely are willing to or think that there's a need for looking inward, that maybe some stuff they are, they are doing mm -hmm. has caused the landscape to change mm -hmm. f for them. Mm -hmm. And for young actors coming out of school and starting the career, um, I, I think that they come out s slightly clueless because the schools are doing a great job at teaching them the methods and the ways sure. and, the, that sort, and the, the nuts and bolts of blocking and moving and the theater. Creating a character yeah. and all that stuff. And I think that's, that's important. But mm -hmm. applying that to the real world in ways that won't s screw you and der up and derail your journey along the way, I think is a huge responsibility that you know, you'll go, hmm, why isn't that happening? Well. That's what the business of acting is, mm -hmm. is all about. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see actors at any stage okay. make in the audition process when they come in to audition for you? Well, uh, before we go to that, I would say it is important to be in class. Um, the reason why that's important is because the teachers who are teaching in the major cities where there's entertainment, like New York and Los Angeles, can teach you about what is expected of you in today's current market and what, um, what you changes. need to be, which changes constantly. Right. And, and the other thing, um, uh, dovetailing on that, the, um, the actor who's been in the business for a while is still maybe doing his or her bag of tricks that worked when they were 25 and now they're 35 and it's not working anymore. And that's why they need to be in class to, to, for a teacher to go, what are you doing? You know, because that's not appropriate. That's something that's either out of date or doesn't work for you because you're older than that now and, and so on and so on. There's, and, and then also what happens is the uh, people who are in the industry, at least on the West Coast, uh, do check in with these teachers, uh, teachers that are respected and say, you know, uh, is this person blah, 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 tell me what you think about this person. So I, I think that that's very important. Okay. So now in terms of getting started, uh, what are the mistakes actors make? Um, I think the tools are, are the first mistake. Having a picture that doesn't look like you. Having a picture that was on, in those couple of moments under that lighting and with that makeup and this, you know, you look <laughs> stunning and it's like, but you don't really look like that, you know? So like, I want to like- Why are you looking at me? Uh, right, Why I know, yeah, exactly. You should <laughs> see the headshot. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, I want to hold the picture up in my hand yeah. and go, yeah, of course. I don't want to go, really? You know, because that's what I do a lot. I kind of go, why are you? So you're, yeah. you're going out on things that you're not right for because we think you look like this, yeah. and missing the things that you are right for because you look like this. So the picture should look like you, first and foremost. Um, 
The resume should be really easy to read. Uh, Samuel French, which is a bookstore for actors and is also online, has a ton of examples that you can get that show different kinds of resumes. There's there is, a fabulous I example. bet you there's some in the business of acting, I'll in bet. In the business of acting. Okay. Which uh, I just happened to have, happen a to have that. Who that? wrote that? You know, the picture, <laughs> speaking of pictures. <laughs> How old is this no, picture? You know, the Nixon Dear administration. God. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the new, the, new, the new edition will have a color. I hope so. Picture should be color. Thank you. Let's go back yes, to that. Yes. Now. Absolutely. But because that was a huge. It was a big that change. Was a revolution because the and, and the and the and the domino effect of what that did and the digital age of of how things are submitted now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's changed a lot of industries. Changed a lot of things. It, the reason it has to be color in brief because everything comes in um, online now and on your computer screen you get pictures that are about the size of a postage stamp. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, if they're excuse me, if they're black and white, you kind of have a tendency to vanish, you know, in a sea of color. So it also gives us things like eye color, hair color, skin tone, things like that. So it's, it's really inform informative to see you in color. Um, and then, um, uh, where's I going to go with that? So, the, oh, then the resume too. Now the resume has to be clear, easy to read, uh, and no lies. I was just going to say truthful. It has to be truthful because you understand why that happens, oh, right? Oh, yeah. An actor thinks they don't really have enough and be, you know, say, oh, the resume helps uh, us identify what kind of an actor they are at this point in their career. Absolutely. And so they want to take that extra. I would get this question, you know, well, I was an extra. I'm going to call it something. No. You're an extra. That, that right. and it shouldn't be on the resume. Yeah. So you kind of understand what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate. Um, your credits, how you list them, and this will be Obviously, a number of the books will list this, but how you list a film credit is different than how you list a theater credit. Uh, you know, in Hamlet, you weren't lead. In Hamlet, you were <laughs> Hamlet, okay, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, where television, you might be guest star, co-star, you know, and there's all different ways of listing that. Uh, um, I want your special skills to be honest and to be defined. Um, are you a person who plays piano by ear or are you a classically trained pianist? Uh, do you speak some French? Do you speak conversational French? Do you speak fluent French? Are you a bunny slope skier or are you a black diamond skier? Um, and so on and so on and so on. Define your skills. Because I mean if it's like you know one line in French in a commercial um, and you have some French on your resume you're probably going to be fine. But if you're doing 30 seconds of a script that's going to go to play in France, yeah. you better be fluent. But this is a big issue because uh, mostly with Spanish, right? Because there's mm. so much well, stuff that's being Spanish market is exploding. Now. Exploding. So, um, it would almost make sense even for an actor who is not right now as we speak bilingual or conversational uh -huh. even in Spanish. Mm -hmm. That's a good class to take absolutely. in addition to all of the other things. If you're Latino, I mean, I think you should absolutely be bilingual if possible because you're just opening up a whole other world. There is uh, this programming be being done in Spanish. Commercials are done in both English and in Spanish. That's two commercials. That's two session fees, two sets of residuals, you know. So it's a, it's a whole world, so. What kind of a mistake, or what kind of mistakes do actors make in the waiting room? Oh. Are there behavioral things yes. that come up that can sort of say, ah, you ain't gonna get this job? The waiting room is a very dangerous place. Now, you should have run a camera in the waiting room. That would be a good reality. We should. Reality. Uh, we, we, we talked about that, actually, because uh, what you see in there is pretty amazing. Um, the, the waiting room is a place where you look across at that actor who you're competing against and go, man, he's all over the tube. He's got guest stars. He's got, you know, and I don't have anything, so forget it. They're, they're going to book him. I don't have a chance, okay? Meanwhile, those two actors come in, and the first actor, my clients go, oh, he's got, I see him all the time, but oh, a new face, great. But the new face has already given it away because the new face has decided not going to happen, okay? Um, the waiting room is where um, one actor, whether being mean or just being, you know, so nervous, they're, they're chatting with you and they're keeping you really busy and you're next and you're trying to be polite, but they're distracting the hell out of you and, you know, and it's your job to say, can we chat later or, or get a cup of coffee later or something, okay, and get back.